businesses. The other funny story about that particular visit was that I had gone to a number of multilateral agencies to try to, as, you know, as journalists do, try to, do you know women who own businesses or anybody in particular I should interview? I said, oh, well, we have some women selling cheese by the side of the road, but we don't really have women who own businesses. So that brings me to my third myth, which is that all women are in microfinance. It is a wonderful tool. Microfinance is terrific, but we really risk it becoming a female canal in which we only place women. It becomes a corner that is not the mainstream, and if you look at what causes GDP growth, it is not sustained investment in microfinance. It is a wonderful, wonderful subsistence tool. I've worked on it. I completely believe in it. But we really make ourselves feel better by saying that our $25 loan is going to be the answer to poverty in Bangladesh. <laughs> now, and, and I mean this because what I'm saying is that these women on the ground there are really trying to make that leap, oftentimes from micro to the next step, right, to medium level. Um, or, or very small business from very micro business. Um, and there's so little support out there. So at Bosnia, I went to this multilateral uh, gentleman who worked there, and I said, do you have any entrepreneurs I should interview? I'm looking for people who have, you know, at least three to five employees, maybe more. Um, it's a pretty fluid definition. It just depends on, you know, what kind of revenues, et cetera. And he said, well, you know, aside from the cheese lady who I already mentioned, we just don't have them. We don't have women who own small businesses here. And so when the story ran in the front page of the Herald Tribune business feature section for that weekend, I emailed it to him and said, just in case you're ever looking for women to interview, here are about five. And I was in your country for about seven days. So this just shows you they just were not used to it. And I honestly think that we all work in silos. So the development people do development. The business people do business. There's very little crossover in between. Um, the policy people do policy. The economics people do economics. The right arm doesn't talk to the left, and we all say, oh my goodness, isn't that too bad that women don't, aren't interested in these things? And you know, I mean, <laughs> spend a day and just ask a couple people, and you can usually find a few women who own businesses of varying scale. So that is, I think, something that I talk about and try to write about a lot, in part because I truly believe that there is nothing that changes women's lives like strengthening their hand in terms of the economic contributions they make in their families. And there is a change that you see that goes on when women are able to bring money into the family because they're able to help, A, influence who gets educated because when there is limited income, it is often only boys. B, they can influence what kinds of decisions they can make within the family. And C, they can change their own roles that their daughters see and their sons see in terms of what women are capable of. And it does change the dynamic in terms of decision making. Um, and I don't say in every case, but in many cases. Um, so I was recently in the north of Afghanistan, and I am, as most <laughs> writers are, very skeptical about all programs and projects. Because everybody has one, and everybody seems to be getting rich from them, but you don't really see the connection between them and the people that they're ostensibly uh, there to help. So I go to see this, uh, an agriculture project run called MEDA, which is run in the north and has market linkages built in. So women are taught to do high-end agricultural produce with consumers built into uh, what they're growing. So they learn better techniques. They learn um, how to do home farming so that oftentimes they can stay within their local communities. They don't have to go far. Um, and they would not let me leave because not only did I have to see the cucumbers and the tomatoes and uh, I think onions and potatoes that were being grown, but I had to see the storage space that they had just used with pooled resources so that they wouldn't have to sell their vegetables into a down market because the prices had just crashed and there was an issue uh, in Pakistan and all this produce was flooding the market and so the prices were bad. And they said, oh, so now we can wait a couple of weeks until the prices get better. Then they showed me um, a flower project that they were, flower sort of experimenting with winter flowers that they were working on and with winter vegetables. And I mean, I was like two hours late to my next interview because this these women were so excited. And one woman said to me, you know, before my husband allowed me to go in this program, which Mita came and talked to our local um, elders and convinced them that this wasn't a bad idea, and we were all sort of within, functioning within the way we usually work, which is we were mostly home, but occasionally going to sell. Um, my husband wouldn't even let me go to the well to get water by myself because of all kinds of reasons, right? Uh, mostly because he was nervous about it and was not, there was no precedent. Now, I go twice a month to Kabul with other women to sell our vegetables, 
and the only thing he asks me when I get back is how much money I've brought home. <laughs> so you see, this isn't, you know, uh, you know, people say, oh, this is imperialism, or, or uh, you know, I've heard all kinds of kinds of discussions about this, but I'm just talking about common sense, what is changing women's lives, and that has very little to do with what anybody else 3,000, 6,000, 9,000 miles away is saying about them. Um, so I guess just the last thing I would say is there are a lot of discussions and a lot of, of uh, questions about what works and what doesn't. And I think if you talk to development folks, almost everyone knows what doesn't work and yet is perpetuated again and again <laughs> and again. And so there has to be, at some point, a common sense threshold that we all stand up and say, okay, well, if you know that simply distributing sewing machines mm -hmm. in a province is not the answer, because A, 10 development organizations have already done that in the past 15 mm -hmm. years, B, there's no buyer for anything that's made after these women um, have the sewing machines, and C, six months later, nobody comes back to check to see, do you need training? Is there a question about who could be a middleman between this market and and international consumers who might be interested, how could you um, produce to foreign, specu foreign specifications or to foreign market demands, or even to Pakistani market demands, Iranian market demands, the local market demands. Um, without that kind of follow-up and sustainability, there will be no change. And it is not an accident that things are remain as they are despite the money that comes in because there is a, not a thought given on the end. The incentives are all wrong. The incentives are all short term and they mm -hmm. favor the donor and they don't look mm -hmm. at what is actually going to make a difference in women's lives for the long term. And so um, these are some of the things that I um, am thinking about working on. Mm -hmm. And just to last thing is that I've just uh, finished a book um, that will be out next year about a, a young woman whose business supported her family and about a hundred girls in her neighborhood during mm -hmm. the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And I think it was not supposed to be an Afghanistan story. The whole point of it is that even in the most extreme circumstances and even when the world has completely forgotten them, women find ways to support their families and they never get credit for it. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that at least a couple of the stories I do mm -hmm. maybe are a little bit on the other side of the balance sheet in terms of showing people that this has been and, and will go on and they deserve our support. Thank you.